In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this button hover effect using only HTML and CSS. Let's get started. If you're new to my channel, I make videos on UX, UI design, and front-end coding. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a comment down below so I know what kind of tutorial you would like to see next. So jumping right into it, I'm opening up a CodePen project, and I'm going to show you the full tutorial from beginning to end. So the only thing I have so far is the import for the font family that we are going to use later on in the project. So to begin, first I'm going to write the HTML code, and then I'm going to write the CSS. So in the HTML, I'm going to include a body tag, and within this body tag, I'm going to include a button, and the button will contain a call to action. This is all the HTML that we are going to use for this project and the rest will be completed within CSS. So jumping into the CSS, first I always include the box sizing border box property because I want to prevent horizontal scrolling on the page. Next I'm going to add some properties to the body. So first I'm going to add a fun background color with a gradient. So I'm going to write background, and then I'm going to write linear gradient. And within linear gradient, first you're going to put the degrees, and then you're going to put the values and where you want them to begin and end. So I actually got these values from a website that I went to, and I was able to manipulate how I wanted it to look. And then the linear gradient code was created. Essentially, this works by first putting in a degree, so I'm going to put 120 degrees. And then I'm going to put certain values in, so I'm going to write RGB. And then I'm going to put the list of colors and where I want them to start and end. So at 0%, I want to start this color. And then I'm going to put the next color in. Okay, cool. So now we have a linear gradient in the background. And next I'm just going to apply some other properties. So I'm going to want to add a height of 100% of the viewport height. And then to ensure that this button is in the center of the screen, I'm going to make this a display of grid and justify and align the content in the center. Next, I'm going to add some styling to this actual button. This is the way a default button looks with HTML and no CSS, but we're going to want to add some styling to it. So I'm going to call that button in the CSS. First, I'm going to want to change the font family. And then I'm going to change the font weight so it's a little bit bolder. Then I want this to be much bigger. Right now it's too small, so I'm going to increase the font size. And I'm going to make it 3M. 1M unit by default is 16 pixels, so 3M is 48. So now the font size is 48 pixels. I'm going to want to remove the current border, so I'm going to make it border none. Next, I'm going to modify the background color and the text color so that way I have a dark button with a lighter text. So I'm going to write background color and change this background color to a dark blue. Next, I'm going to make the color of the font white. So instead, I'm actually going to go up here and make it color white. So that way all the font properties are at the top. I just realized the font wasn't taking because I actually misspelled it in the font family, so I just made the correction, and now it's actually Montserrat. Next, there's not a lot of breathing room between the text and the sides of the button, so I'm going to increase the padding of it, and I'm going to make it 1M. Next, I'm going to want to add a little bit of a border radius so the corners are not so harsh, so I'm going to write border radius 0.1EM to add a little bit of curve. For this, I'm going to set the position to relative, now this is important because later on we're going to make other properties absolute. It's important that you declare another position earlier so it has something to reference to. So right now I'm going to declare that one as relative. Now the way that we're going to get these lines to animate in is by using the before and after property. So I'm going to create a before property which will be a line across the top and I will make an after property that will be a line across the bottom. So this works by creating a pseudo element. I'm going to tell the CSS to look at this button and then make a property before. And when you use a before or after property, you have to include a content tag, even if it's empty. So these will actually be empty, but I still have to include it. Initially, I'm going to set the width to 100% so we can start to see it on the screen. 
and I'm going to set a particular height and I'm going to set a color. For this element, I'm going to set the position to absolute. And once I do, now we can see it on the screen. But the alignment of it is a little bit weird. So I'm going to make the left zero so it gets pushed all the way to the left. And then I'm going to make it a top zero so now it's pinned to the top. I had to set the position absolute for this before property so that way it references the position of an other element above it, its parent element. So if I didn't have this position relative on this actual button, this line will go to the top of the document. And it's because this property, if this is set to absolute, it's looking for something that has a position property. So if the parent element, which is the button in this example, if this doesn't have a position associated with it, it will go to the body. But I want that line to be contained within this button. So that's why it's important that I keep that position relative on that actual button. Next, I'm going to apply a very similar effect to the after property as well, but I don't want to repeat all this code. So instead here, I'm going to write button before and then a comma and then button after. But I only want the left and top to affect the before. So instead, I'm going to cut this out and then write button before and apply those properties to that one. And then for the after, I want it to have a different effect. So I'm going to copy this and paste it. So for the after, I actually want it to be on the bottom. So instead of being top, I'm going to switch it to bottom. And instead of the left, I actually want this one to animate in the other direction. So I want it to start from the right. So instead, I'm going to put right zero so that way it grows from this direction. So now we have these lines visible on the page, but I'm going to want to add an animation effect so that way these lines are only visible when I hover on it. And when I do hover on it, I want this line to grow from the left to go all the way to the right, and I want this one to move in the opposite direction. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to write button hover before, and then I'm going to write button hover after, because I want them to have a similar effect. So I want the width to change here. So I'm going to write width 100%. So that means that initially in this default state, I'm going to modify that width to be zero. So as you can see, it looks like the lines disappear because the width is now zero. And when I hover over it, now the lines are visible. So this is looking really good, but I'm going to want to add a transition so we actually see how it animates in. So for this before and after property, I'm going to add a transition of the width, and I want this animation to take place in about 200 milliseconds. And the kind of curve I wanted to have, I'll just write ease in out, and we can see how that looks. So now when I hover over it, it animates. One thing to note is that the underlying button does have a border radius, but when I hover over it, it loses its border radius. So for the original button, I have to go up here and write overflow hidden. So that way it retains its border radius and the line is only visible where we have that button. I'll just make this a little bit more extreme for a second so then you can actually see it. Here I have a very extreme border radius. So when I hover over it, it's only visible where that button is visible. I'm also going to want to add a color effect. So when I hover over the button, the color of the button changes as well. So I'm going to go down to where I declared my hover effects and I'm just going to write button hover. And here I'm going to change the background color property. So now that I've added this other background color, when I hover over it, the color of the button changes from the darker blue to the lighter blue, but there's no kind of real transition that occurs here. It just immediately changes from one shade to the other shade. So I'm going to want to apply a similar transition effect that we used before. So I'm going to take this transition, copy it, and then paste it where that regular button is. But instead of it affecting the width, I'm going to change it to background color. So now when I hover over it, there's a slight animation between the two states. So there you go. That's how I made a really cool button hover effect using only HTML and CSS. Please let me know if you have any questions about the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.